wag na natin ulitin. Pero, to the effect na sinabi niya, uh, walang karapatan yung mga estudyante kasi mahihirap sila or something to that effect. Nakakot lang po siya ng uh, live report niya. To Congresswoman Riggs, viral ngayon sa social media ang isang teacher na nag-live sa TikTok at nanermon ng mga estudyante. Para kay Congresswoman, na madalas din trending sa kanyang content sa TikTok at FB, ano dapat ang isa alang alang sa paggamit ng social media, lalo na kapag politician, teacher, or kilalang tao? Trending ba ba ako? Lahat po ata kami trending si Kong Berin ngayon. Oo, trending ko. Um, uh, you know, uh, I would always say naman pagdating sa social media, you don't have to be an influencer. Kahit lahat tayo, di ba? You have to be a responsible poster. <laughs> di ba? Uh, uh, yung social media is a platform that you can use for the good or evil. It's either minira ka ng tao, or gagawin mo, di ba, pang clickbait, or whatsoever. So, hopefully, di ba, gamit, gamitin natin yung social media sa tamang paraan. To educate, to uh, be a better person, to be a kinder person, at hindi yung mga malinira, or fake news, at lahat. Uh, so, ito, kung ginamit niya pang sermon, as long as it is, hindi siya nagmumura or wala siyang violation sa community guidelines, right naman niya yun. But I hope, di ba, you use the social media uh, as an avenue to uh, let others um, be educated and siguro be a better Filipino citizen kaysa manira-nira tayo. We all want um, peace, especially this Holy Week. Sana, di ba, peaceful tayong lahat and uh, we, we go back to goodness na lang. Ako, napanood ko kasi yung teacher na nag-viral sa social media. Uh, comics, uh, malayong-malayo siya sa pag-tiktok mo. Uh, medyo napakasakit talaga nung sinabi ng teacher. At hindi ko maintindihan ang context kung bakit siya napadpad sa social media. Um, para sa akin, napaka sakit ng mga salita niya, pananalita niya, napaka-uncalled for bilang isang guro. Bilang isang guro, dapat nag-practice talaga siya ng, ng self-control. Dapat huminga muna siya ng malalim kahit ano pa yung ginawa ng mga estudyante sa kanya bilang guro na ginagalang. Dapat hindi siya talaga nagwala. At uh, binigyan naman siya sa pagkakaalam ko ng DepEd ng tatlong araw para magpaliwanag. Siguro antayin na lang natin yung napakaganda niyang paliwanag. Uh, kasi matindi talaga yung mga pinagsasabi ng guro na, na nag-viral. At napakasakit ng mga salita niya. Tinawag pa niyang, uh, wag na natin ulitin. Pero... To the effect na sinabi niya uh, walang karapatan yung mga estudyante kasi mahihirap sila or something to that effect. E kaya nga siya yung nagtuturo eh para matuto yung mga bata. Ano pa sila matututo kung ganun yung klase ng pagtuturo? So siguro antayin lang talaga natin yung magiging sagot niya. Bigyan natin siya ng 3 days sabi ng DepEd pero kahapon pa yun so 2 days na lang. Antayin natin. Salamat po. Ano po kagabi? Okay. I, I saw the video, not fully, no? but um, looking from the balcony, this can also be an eye-opener. May mali ang picture, yes. There is also the impact of social media, yes. But we also have to look at the bigger picture. Baka yung ating mga public school teachers ay meron din pinagdaraanan at wala dun yung avenue na yung mga needs nila o yung mental problems nila o yung kanilang acceptance dun sa mga pinagagawa ng ibang estudyante. Because it's a very big institution and there should be a command or a chain where they can vent out their problems. And um, 
ay uh, syempre ngayon marami rin, marami rin nagagalit sa kanya at uh, on one hand naman hindi lang din natin alam iilan sa ating public school teachers are feeling the same ano ba yung pinagmulan ng lahat ng mga ito where is she coming from and um, nakakalabas ba sila ng bosses sa within the department of education is somebody hearing them out is somebody hearing their problems or is somebody supporting them? Ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay? What should be the feedback mechanism between our teachers and their administration? This is a very important thing that should also be looked into. Because for all we know, baka mamaya sa loob-loob niya ando na yung galit, pero hindi siya makalapit sa principal, sa regional director, or baka nakalapit siya, may problema na, pero kinocontain kasi hindi nila maipalabas sa central office. So, mind you, we need to look into this kasi baka mamaya it's not an isolated case. Nagkataon lang na lang nalaman ng lahat kasi nilive niya. It's, it, nilive niya, di ba? Was it live or somebody took it? I'm not sure. Nilive, nilive niya, di ba? Yun ang pagkaintindi ko eh. So, hindi siya by accident eh. It's intentional. There's a deeper message behind that. It's, it's it's venting out and and doon yung baka mamaya hindi na niya alam ano bang gagawin ko who can hear me out who can help me kasi minsan yung mga tao they want it to be viral because they need the attention or they want it to be viral because nobody is paying attention to them or is this a support na kailangan no 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 this is for for the sake of the teacher kasi it's a very challenging environment. And then we go back. Marami tayong mga government employees na nasa baba. Na ang dami nilang challenges. Marami nakakasuhan. Wala namang pangibayad ng abogado. Marami na pagbibintangan. Hindi sila makabent out. And that is where leadership comes into picture. And that is why this problem should be looked deeply by the Department of Education. Ano ba ang problema? Meron bang feedback mechanism? And mind you, we have also teachers na talagang may problema. I had an experience before na medyo nagkaroon ng problema, personal problem yung teacher. And pinag, kung sa ganyan ng, yung pinag, ano nga niya, pinagbubuntungan. Yeah, pinagbubuntungan niya ng kanyang hinanakit ay yung mga studyante, pinapalo niya ng payo. But because she was not like that before, I decided to come in and look into the situation. And I realized she had personal problems na kailangan natin intindihin siya. But at the same time, the children cannot suffer. The solution there was we requested her transfer to the regional office to do admin tasks. Para naman palitan muna siya as principal. And again, this speaks of a bigger situation, a wider situation, na dapat talaga tingnan ng liderato ng DepEd. And solutions must be in place, no? Baka mamaya nasasakal siya doon, dito muna siya sa admin task, o yung namang support na ano doon, o yung baka meron tayong mga teachers na nahihirapan mag-cupag kasi may mga challenges ang, challenges ang mundo eh. That's, that's normal, it's not a perfect situation. Now, where will we place them? What is the solution of uh, that end on that matter? Bibigyan ba natin ng parang option to retire pero meron siyang anak buhay na gagawin? or ano ang magiging partnership nila with other institutions. That is where the management should come into play. Because at this point of time, nangangailangan ng nanay. Nangangailangan ng nanay. Both the students, the teachers, and the institution. Thank you. We invite our uh, honorable speakers to share their uh, close, uh, brief uh, closing uh, statements. Uh, can I start the lab? Yes. Um, actually, I was going to add on to what uh, Kong Janet said. Um, again, no, as part of EdCom 2, uh, to be quite frank, learning environment conditions are part of what our next year's oversight function is going to be one of the priority areas we will look into. Um, the lower house and Chairman uh, Roman has already passed a mental health and wellness uh, proposal, no? um, particularly for public schools. 
Um, the PISA results, as a matter of fact, show that the Philippines uh, scores very low when it comes to um, learning environment and school bullying and so on, from the student's point of view. Uh, but it also uh, apparently has great difficulty from the teacher's point of view. Um, so all of that is still part of what EDCOM 2 is doing now in terms of our oversight functions in order to ask precisely the kinds of questions, in fact, that uh, Congresswoman Garin has already pointed out. Um, um, uh, I think as a closing statement, no, is that hindi uh, uh, po in fact, if we take on the same intensity no, of our work as we have in the last year and a half or so, uh, mas marami pa kaysa sa 57, 58 letter priority bills no, ang magagawa po ng Kongreso. As a matter of fact, kung titingnan mo ninyo, ang uh, output on third reading um, ng, ng 19th Congress ay malinaw naman po that this Congress works hard, that this Congress has a larger uh, policy framework in mind that really has to do with improving the lives of Filipinos. No? Um, sana naman po sa uh, isang oras at kalahati o isang oras natin na uh, pag-uusap, uh, malinaw rin po sa inyo yan. At uh, hanggang po sa susunod, no? kasi gaya na sinabi ko ng ating umpisa, bahagi naman po talaga ng aming trabaho ay ang magpahiwatig sa inyo ng mga nangyayari po sa Kongreso. Um, sa pagpasok namin sa nating lahat sa Holy Week break at sa pagpasa ng House of Representatives ng RDH 7, uh, umaasa po kami ng aming mga kaibigan sa Senado, maliban po Siyempre, napakahalaga din po talaga na maipasan nila ang, ang LEDA priority measures. Sana mapagtuunan na, na din po nila ng pansin yung RBH6. Kasi nagko-close na po yung window. Nagko-close na po yung panahon. At kung hindi pa natin ito gagawin ngayon, kailan pa? Babalik na naman tayo sa square zero, quite frankly, at gano'n na naman, parehong mga problema na naman ang um, tatalakayin, parehong mga suli, parehong mga issues na naman imbis na mabigyan na sana ng solusyon. So yun po yung ating inaapila sa ating mga kaibigan sa Senado. Maraming salamat po. And uh, I'd like to uh, say thank you to our media friends. Um, and uh, I think the next time we we'll may see each other again is uh, after the holy month of uh, Ramadan. So I bless. Uh, I want to want to greet you again a peaceful weekend, peaceful uh, holy week, and uh, uh, thank you again for your all your time. Um, so we're just to add, no, with everything else. Uh, so thank you everyone and hopefully uh, this holy week no, we get to realize ano talaga mga priorities natin. Um, tayo dito, kami dito sa Congreso, alam naman, I think it's very clear what our priorities are. Also our friends in the Senate. Uh, um, wish everyone a peaceful and a uh, very um, good uh, holy week. Maraming maraming salamat sa at dahil gutom na tayong lahat, help it lang. It takes 20 minutes for our brain to realize na busog na tayo. Kaya huwag yung sundin ang ginawa ko. Kasi dati, siguro naman makakatestify dito si SDS Don Gonzalez. I was 20 pounds lighter before. No? Kaya lang, kapag di ba meron tinatawag takaw busog, Okay, yeah, yeah, parang oh, mata. Oh, mata, oh, mata oh, na mo ka, ka ng kain, and all of a sudden para ka masusuka. Because it takes 20 minutes for your brain
to decipher the information from your stomach. So pag kumain ka, hintayin mo, after 20 minutes, malalaman mong busog ka na. So eat moderately. Thank you sa lahat lahat. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Majority Leader. Sir, what do you say? Thank you. <laughs> Very supportive lang ako sa mga ano natin. So maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Ako, kailan ako naka-schedule, araw-araw naka-schedule. Salamat. Thank you, Thank you uh, Deputy Majority Leader Karina Pilipino, Deputy Majority Leader um, Migs of uh, PGA Partilis, uh, Chairman Khalid, Chairman Chico, and Congresswoman Kami for your participation. To everyone, maraming salamat po ulit.